Hello boys, how are we? Uh, today I wanted to talk about travelling. Uh, now where you're from, uh, that word might mean very different things. If you're from America, travelling might mean driving three hours to another state. That might be about as much travelling as you guys ever do in your life. I'm from Europe, so travelling means going anywhere in the world. Uh, I know Australians are the same, you guys love to travel. Um, I'm currently on holiday. I can't say where, because the next video is a reveal of where. Um, but yeah. I've gone on my own. It's the first time uh, that I can think of that I've done like a serious trip on my own. Uh, I've been to like Scotland, which is for people who aren't from the UK, that's an internal flight, it's not really travelling. Um, I've gone to Greece and Marbella before with sort of people, uh, but sort of been on my own out there. But this is the first time I've gone from my house to the airport, flown out, been in a city on my own, not known a single person out here, and hopefully get home as well, I uh, haven't got to that bit yet. But anyway, um, the reason that I, I wanted to, to talk about travelling today is because I, I kind of knew it before I came, but obviously now I'm actually out here, it's, uh, it's become even more apparent that going to another country, certainly where you don't speak the language, but going to another country on your own where you don't know anyone, really, really grows you up. Um, you have absolutely no backup plan, you have absolutely no sort of fallback or anything like that. It is literally you and whatever you can do while you're out there and whatever pieces of language you can put together. And I'll sort of go through the different sections in a minute of, of, of why why I think it's really important that people should go and, and how it grows you up. But something that I've always said that I, I got from my dad uh, and one of the reasons that uh, going on I think they're called vacations, but going on a holiday with sort of a, someone that you're romantic with is really important because my dad, my dad always said, you will never learn how stupid someone is until you go abroad with them. And that might sound a little bit harsh, but uh, it, it, it is true because the decisions that you have to make when, you, when you're traveling are adult decisions. Um, and also you very rarely spend that much time continuously with one person than if you sort of go on a flight with them or something like that. And we, when I went on rugby towards Croatia back in April, I, I may have put it out there to the team. I said, just keep your ears out boys, because you're, you're gonna hear some things this week. And I said, you never learn how stupid someone is until you travel abroad with them. Um, and yeah, about within about 15 minutes of a 24 hour coach journey, We'd uh, we'd heard someone ask what part of Germany Russia's in, and uh, yeah, in a way, it's kind of sad that people don't know this stuff. But there are people who genuinely, yeah, I've 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 heard what part of Spain is Portugal in, and people just don't know these things. But it does make you realise travelling abroad. Um, yeah, there was the when we were. At, uh, when we were at the passport security and stuff like that, one of the lads got out of the coach without his passport and his justification was, well look, they can see it's me. Not really how passport control works. But anyway, that was sort of a little anecdote to sort of uh, explain why I, feel, why I feel it's important to do things like this. The first part of why I think traveling on your own is important as a man is the two main skills that it will bring out of you is planning and organization. Um, especially if you are going, as I mentioned, to somewhere where you do not speak the language and you do not know anyone out there. Um, just because if your planning and preparation and organisation is not on point, you are going to find yourself in real trouble. Um, so for example, if you are going on maybe more of a city break, you're going to want to make sure you know exactly, you're going to know, want to know where the hotel is, you're going to know, know how easy it is to get to the city centre, what buses, etc. Et that's, that's what I've got at the moment. I've got to work out how I'm going to get around. Um, on this particular holiday, my organisation wasn't as good as it could be, and I've ended up wasted a lot of time walking from one place to another, because on the map it looked that far apart, but when you actually walk it, it's about 45 minutes when I could have just looked up what bus I could have got instead. Um, but yeah, so that, that's something that's something that's really gonna be important. And um, that, that goes from before you've even done, obviously getting on the plane, booking the flights, getting your getting whatever currency is and things like that. If it's more of a outdoorsy sort of holiday rather than, than in the city, then sometimes 
planning is even more important because those are the kind of places that you can get really, really lost. If you're sort of doing a, a hike in the Amazon or something like that, and you haven't sort of done all your preparation and organization correctly, we ain't gonna see you again, which obviously isn't ideal. So yeah, that's that's sort of the main the, the main sort of two skills I'd say uh, that it's gonna bring out of you is sort of planning and organization. Next to that, I'd say things it's gonna bring out of you is patience, resilience, and adaptability. Um, now I had this on the way out here. Um, my The company that I flew with overbooked my flight. They didn't just overbook my flight, they overbooked my flight by 48 people. Uh, I'm not sure what mathematician is getting sacked, but yeah, not ideal. Um, and I checked in quite last minute, which was my own fault, and because of that, I was one of the 48 people that didn't make the cut. Now, just through pure charm, charisma, handsome looks, whatever, negotiation, somehow I still blew and got on this flight. But anyway, the point was, for a while, it looked like I wasn't getting on this flight, uh, which would have meant, right, if I've missed this flight, what am I gonna do now? which luckily I, off the top of my head, just from other things that have happened, I know some laws about what what the airline company has to do, what I'm entitled to, if they can't move me onto another flight, but then that's all well and good, I can go up there and say I'm entitled to this, entitled to that. If they turn around and go, now nah, we can't do that and there's nothing you can do about it, all of a sudden, I've got a hotel and return flights booked for a holiday I can't get to. So that's about being resilient, and, and adapting, I would have had to, I might have had to grab all my stuff and run to another terminal last minute if they've gone, right, we've got you on this flight, but it leaves in 20 minutes. Like, you've got to be, you've got to be able to go and you've got to be able to be fluid. That's something, as sort of someone who's, let's just say on the spectrum, let's be polite, uh, that, that's something that's not always easy for me. Uh, if things don't run smoothly, sometimes I get a little bit, a little bit angsty. I don't know if it's because it was six o'clock in the morning, but I was remarkably calm. Um, I also hadn't eaten, so every part of me wanted to explode, but actually it kind of got to the point because I had to literally sit by this desk for two hours as they counted people onto the plane and hope that enough people were transferred or enough people hadn't turned up. And I, there was down to three spaces and there was a couple and three solo travelers and they let the three solo travelers on and stuffed the couple off and I was one of them. So. My flight was too early. Long story, flight was too early, but I, I had to sit there and I had to sort of go through my head about what I'm going to do if I'm not going to get on this flight because I couldn't, I wouldn't have got the money back on my hotel. It, there was a point where it was looking like I think I was just going to have to bin off the holiday, uh, get my money back for the flights, and then I would have just claimed with my, the company that I flew with my hotel and said, You're the reason I couldn't get out there, um, which would have been, would have been crap, but. They, at the one point it was looking like that was that was what was going to happen. So yeah, it's little things like that where things like airports and holidays, if something goes wrong, there isn't a backup. There, there isn't, you, you can't really do a, anything else. Um, so it's really good, it's rich, it can be really stressful, but it's really good in terms of you, you can't sit there and whine and, and go, oh, this isn't fair because they don't care and it's not gonna change anything, which unfortunately is kind of a good metaphor for life. Um, you've gotta just deal with the situation that you're in and you've gotta go, right, okay, these are the things I can control, these are the things you can't. If this goes wrong, you basically need plan B, plan C, plan D, uh, because you need to have alternate options and you need to come up with those on your own. So yeah, second, second major skill I'd say traveling on your own uh, would build up is the idea of resilience and patience. Finally, um, and in my opinion, the most important, um, most important skill, I guess, attribute that it builds up, confidence. Absolutely massive confidence. Um, some people are lucky and they're just born with this thing of, of a certain level where things just don't bother them. I was the same, I would, I would personally, I, I would have, from the moment I turned 18, I would have got on a plane to Australia or, or America and on my own, wouldn't have bothered me. Um, I would have, I maybe not so much a country that I didn't speak the language, I would have wanted to learn a bit of it first, but an English speaking country, I'd have gone on my own without my parents and it would not have bothered me. I'm not saying it wouldn't have been a disaster, but I wouldn't have been scared to go. But like I said, a lot of people, um, especially sort of Americans and things like that, some people never leave their state. So the idea of traveling to another country on your own is just, 
inconceivable. A lot of people go to university, which normally is sort of within your own country, and that might be the first time you move out, which is which is really good. But I still think there is something there is something about going to another country, as I've said, sort of dealing with airports, dealing with the documents that you that you've got to have, maybe not speaking the language. Though those things they're so important and they're things you really can't get wrong that it does, it, it, will, it will build confidence in you if you go, do you know what, I might not have got everything right and I certainly haven't on this holiday, I've got quite a lot wrong so far actually, um, but cross fingers, I'll get home alive and everything will be all right. I go, cool, it might have cost me a bit of extra, I might have come home without some things that I went out there with, but I did it. I organised this trip on my own, paid for it on my own, got out there on my own, did the holiday and got back completely on my own. I had no help from anyone whatsoever. And that, that, that will go, right, cool. And the most important thing is I'll learn from this holiday and the things that I have got wrong, hopefully I won't get wrong next time. But look, don't want to go too much in circles. I think I've made my point. It will grow you up. Basically, it will grow you up. It will put some hairs on your chest. Because if you're stuck in another city where you don't speak the language and something goes wrong, you have no choice but to grow up and get on with it. There's no one you can call. Just head down, focus, and work on what you can work on. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you did find any of it interesting or useful, please do consider liking and subscribing. As always, comment any other advice, any stories maybe below, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care lads.